Yes, good, we have the block up. And I think you can actually hear the Kahoot music because I figured out a way to do that. So I was replying to everyone's emails, getting some stuff set up here. And I'm, I'm wondering if we can actually, so can everyone hear and see me? We always check that. <clears throat> and we're gonna see, we should have the Kahoot music, Kahoot music going. How's everyone doing? We are back. Can everyone hear and see and, sure, there's a quiz. <laughs> Being partially blocked. Close that off there. And so, oh, well, hopefully. I'm gonna go down here to this one. Well, good. I'm trying to figure out um, some last little stuff right here. Points, cloud bots. Ah, someone's asking right here. I should say how to do it. I thought there was a way. Huh. Let me look at this one more time here. How's everyone doing? Wait, add points, username, and then this. Okay, someone's gonna help me out right here. Is there not a way? Oh, well, that's a bummer. Well, I'll figure this out eventually. Let me look at one last thing here. Ah, uh, I get too, too fixated on these things. You're well, hey, Jeff, that's so good. Jeff, so good to see you. Jeff, Jeff played some cahoots. Jeff, congratulations. Great job, Jeff. So good to see you here. I was looking over at some uh, setup stuff. Um, Jeff might notice that we have the cahoot music playing in the background now. I figured out how to do that because um, we got a lot of new cool things, Jeff. I wanna hear this, I wanna hear my music. We've been, I've been working on some new stuff. We don't got cahoot going right here. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, we stream in the morning lately. Here we go. Oh no, yeah. You guys should be hearing this on stream now. That's for Jeff. This is for Jeff. Jeff, I'm gonna let you pick. Button one, two, three, or four. <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff. Any advice? Watch the stream. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, these reviews hopefully are helpful. And Jeff, uh, well, he was taking, he did the online stuff that you guys are doing. So if Jeff is saying that these reviews are helpful for, um, you can pick a button, one, two, three, or four, Jeff. I did press one of them, so you can pick a button for your congratulations. One, two, three, or four, Jeff. Um, yeah, ask questions all the time. You did great, great job. Um, the Kahoot code is there. I've got the Kahoot music one here, Kahoot music. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, I really appreciate that. Like, I remember you emailed me because I wanted to confirm. Why are we losing people? <laughs> Maybe we're getting people. Yeah, um, what you should do, I should have explained. Um, you want to have it open on your phone. Probably the best way is to go to kahoot.it on your phone. And um, on your phone, you'll select it. Now, some of the questions can be a little quick. And as long as no one kahoot bombs us, why are we losing people? <laughs> Um, so you'll enter in the code and you'll play along. Oh yeah, <laughs> the code is via email. Did you guys see the announcement? Don't put the code in the chat or we could get Kahoot bombed. Because I put Kahoot in the name of the video and people search those things. Because people get bored. We'll get someone like uh, a YouTuber on here. Is my neck see through? That was weird. It's weird going on here. Isaac, everyone's like, Isaac is back. Isaac. A little food in the background. Yeah, Isaac knows some Mega Man right there. That is totally Mega Man. He's doing a little adjusting of the noises and sounds. Turn up the food a little bit there. We got it going on, everyone. It is, we'll be starting soon. Yeah, I, I, just out of fear of, especially with it on being the, on the internet, sorry, you know, but on the internet, then crazy things can happen. <laughs> so I, I've, you know, stopped that. And then if something crazy happens, I just end the code. I'm like, okay, code's over. <laughs> Hopefully nothing like that happens. I think we've done 
we've probably done Kahoot 20 times. We've had one person somehow hack our Kahoot, which really ruins the Kahoot. That was like exam two Kahoot last semester. Then we had another person crash our Kahoot. And so, um, yeah, it, it gets chosen for you. Just so no one can put anything crazy and like try to get around the... Yeah. Yeah, was it exam three? Yeah, it did. And then I restarted it and they didn't crash us. Yeah, Jeff remembers that. And then I just had to like restart it. And, you know, we're just here to learn. They're going to get some points. So, um, I wonder if... I might need to disable this. I wonder if that works. I was reading up on stuff. Um, I think it's just other practice exams. Um, yeah, they should just be... Oh, if it doesn't look like it's over the material, please tell me right away. Oh, oh, is there two on Canvas? Yeah. Oh, whoa, it did it. It did do it. It did report the highest. Let's see. That's cool. Look at... You guys just passed Julio. You guys just passed him. So pretty crazy right there so i wonder if i can maybe i shouldn't have done that i don't know could you use your i can't remove its mods stream labs what you doing so um <laughs> you did, yeah it's I'm, I'm really proud of you guys you guys have been here a lot paying a lot of attention doing a lot of hard work you guys are on track so keep up the great work keep up you know I was looking over a bunch of stuff on how did this all works and stuff with Streamlabs. And Jeff, so glad you did. You got an A, man. That is, um, no, I haven't moved yet. Jeff knows about that. That I'm going, I'll, I'm going to still teach ET, obviously. And I keep seeing like green bleed on my neck from like the screen. I don't know why that's happening. Um, I'm going to be in Texas and uh, going there with my fiance at the very end of next month. So um, it's some League of Legends, is it? <laughs> we'll get started here in about three minutes. But I'm super excited for that. Like I... Just getting all the apartment stuff ready, getting out of my place. I got, I got, you know, I need to go to like, here, wait, you guys tell me this. Um, if I'm selling off like bookshelves, oh, you bet, Needy, I totally am. I, I'm still at UT, 100%. It's because I do stuff like this. And you, I say that students really enjoy this because you can ask a question like this. You can just be like, hey, Brian, I got a question. And then boom, question to you right there. Um, so I'm still gonna be 100% at UT. I actually just got, Jeff doesn't know about this, but we mentioned, mentioned it this morning that I got a UT1 grant, which um, we're going to develop more things with what I'm doing and my neck's just gonna keep having green on it for some reason. Um, so I'm really excited by it, that we are going to be doing even more stuff. And uh, it was like 25 people were, were awarded these UT1 grants out of about 300 applicants. So that's like 7.75%, is that, is that right? My brain's breaking, no, 7.66%. And 7.33%. Uh, and um, yeah, so I was really excited. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we'll get started here at 410. So be ready. I'll remove, which block is that that I have to remove? Block number one. Block number one has to get removed, not block two. Block one, just so people don't crash our stream. Um, Doing the quizzes get dropped for this section. How many quizzes get dropped for this section? How many quizzes get dropped? And this is the importance of doing as many quizzes as you can. Two, you guys got it. Great job. Two get topped. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask. Other than, like, buy, barter, sell, trade groups, are there any... Hey, Kelly. Um, are there any groups... Uh, no, we're doing seven. <laughs> That's, you get the two drops. So it's like, eh, got a 90. Good. Whatever. I understand it. Um, does anyone know, like... Because I'm going to try to sell off, like, bookshelves and a desk and stuff like that. And then I might just give it to Goodwill if I can't. Like, you know, I'm going to try to because it's going to cost like you know hundreds to thousand dollars to move so i'm like okay maybe i can get like the u-haul rental truck <laughs> paid for by selling bookshelves facebook marketplace i should look into that smoke free pet free apartment so i'm going to try to start putting that up epic pony is such a good <laughs> epic pony that's so good yeah and i'd probably be asking pr at pretty low prices for them so i sold all my stuff on facebook marketplace when i moved down here awesome worked great okay i totally need to look into that Facebook Marketplace. I need to do that. And um, yeah, like probably sell my bookshelves for like 20 or even 10. I don't know. I don't know how much bookshelves go for. Someone's like, 10? You're ripping people off. Bookshelves are a dollar. I'd be like, they're they're actual wood. Like they're they're actual like wood wood. They're wood. They're wood. I've got a really bad desk. I'll just give away that desk. And then I've got a hardwood desk. So why is that desk for 20 bucks? I don't know. Yard sales. It's a <laughs> 
Faisal Trade UK K page, I should check that out too. Well, yeah, I know. I think I got each of these for like 50 or so. I can't remember. I've had them for like a decade. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I'm just, if they go to a good home and someone like pays, I mean, if I finally give them a good will, that's all right too. It's just like, I have to start being like, I gotta get rid of stuff. <laughs> so but I keep all my manga. Attack on Titan. Good stuff right there. Bonfire. <laughs> it's got a lot of old stuff right here. You can sell any of your resources to college town. You can get at least 10 people. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I should do that. I'm going to... Your books. <laughs> how many bells? How many bells? How much? How many bells for a lemur? How many bells for a lemur right here? We're not selling the lemurs. The lemurs are... are st oh, Zamufu. What you doing, Zamufu? He's going to a little shy guy. The other. Got the other. You missed it. You'll have to watch today's Star Today's lecture. They took over. They. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. So don't sell the lemurs. <laughs> okay. I think that's got it. We got everyone in who's going to be in. We got 18 people. That's pretty good. That's pretty good out of 70. That's pretty good. If we got these kind of uh, numbers during the year, that'd be awesome. So, um, Jeff. Jeff, do you want to play? Do you want to play, Jeff? You don't have to if you don't want to. I don't know how to get you the code. You want to play, Jeff? Hey, Jeff, get ready. Get ready. Okay, you ready, Jeff? Oh, shoot. How do we get Jeff the code? Don't get just. I mean, what do we do? <laughs> do I put it? I don't want to... Email him. I don't have his email right here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jeff, what... Jeff, let me find it. I can email you from my phone, I think. Let me do it real quick. Let me look. I can't remember your last name. Jeff201. No, wait. Is that you? Hmm. Oh, I think it is. Wait. Does your last name start with a B, Jeff? Oh, wait. There it is. <laughs> Two seconds. Okay, we're going to get Jeff in on this. And then give me two seconds. You can delete it out of the chat here since this is a public chat. I'm so blind. Okay, two seconds. Let me look at this screen. I don't want to break our Kahoot. Okay. I know, I was going to do that. I was thinking about that. And I was like, what if there is someone watching right now and they steal it? Jeff, did you check your email, Jeff? So check your email, Jeff. Yeah, I would delete that too. Yeah. I, I mean, it's like half out there, but it's half not. So. That's what I always tell people. It's like anything in chat is kind of publicish. So if you want it or not, Jeff, want it. Yeah, so go look at the announcement. You got it. You got it. Awesome. Great job, Jeff. Are you amazing ama Amazon Leopard? You're welcome, Jeff. Glad to have you here. Let me take this out here. Or maybe you're Happy Dolphin or Brave Glider. Happy Dolphin. There we go. And did we get in... Um, did Sam join in? Has everyone else joined in? We'll literally be starting in a second here. Has everyone joined in? Uh, double check. It should work. It should work, Samantha. Give it another try. Look, it's not the one on Stats One. It's the one I sent in an announcement. Go to Canvas. Go go to Canvas and look at the announcement. So you should see the announcement on Canvas. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you can head out anytime you want, Jeff. That's all right. We'll give. We'll see if Sam finds it here, and then we'll start literally in seconds. I just want to make sure everyone's in who can get in. Do you guys think the the Kahoot volume is too loud, too quiet? What do you think about the Kahoot volume? Say perfect, raise it, lower it. What do you guys think? You guys can hear it through stream, right? I think so. Good. So I thought I, I can see its volumes. That it looks good. Aquatic ferret. How you doing, Sam? Did you get in? It's lit. Awesome. I used to not have it through the stream, and then I figured out a way to put it through the stream. Now my neck goes green because of it. Looks like we're good to go. <clears throat> I'm clean my throat again. Okay, such a bop. I know Kahoot music is classic. 
So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh man, that's some old stuff. That's that's like 2018 stuff right there. Uh, we got it. you guys ready? It's block number one I need to remove, right? <laughs> so I think we're good. That might be Sam right there. How are we doing, Sam? Did we get in? Watch some James Key. You guys know James Key. Just got in. Awesome. Here we go. So let's do this. Let's start playing some Kahoot right here. And let's go and let's remove the block. Sorry. No, where's block one? Click it. Block one. Which of the following phrases helps us identify quantitative variables? Which of the following phrases helps us identify quantitative variables? So which of these phrases helps us identify quantitative variables? Make sure you're here and paying quick attention because some of these go pretty quick. We've got a bunch of responses in here right now. So which of these helps us identify quantitative variables? Quantitative variables will be identified with what? Quantitative variables, quantitative. And the answer is, I bet everyone's getting it. It's how much. So quantitative variables are actually, they're numeric. Does that make sense? Does everyone have notes on this? Quantitative variables, great job on this question, excellent work. Quantitative variables are how much, they're numeric, they're actual real numbers. I will say this, I think I, please, here, take a quick note. I'm dropping some major hints right now. Um, there's two types of quantitative variables. I didn't say this, but as I look through the questions, and I think I removed the ones that I didn't like, but there's two types. Everyone take a note on this. There's continuous and discrete. Those are like subtypes. Continuous is a number like 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.88. Those are all continuous. And then discrete is like a whole number, like one, two, three, four. So those are discrete. These are both types of quantitative. And then uh, continuous. I think I removed them, but I was trying to like make sense of all the question banks. And just in case you see continuous, these can have decimals. So those are continuous numbers. Does that make sense to everybody right there? I think they're out of there, but they're like subtypes of quantitative. I just want to make sure I mention anything that could be on the test. So both of those are quantitative. They're just like subtypes, but it's quantitative. Cool. Guess what we're going to do next right here. And let's see who's in the lead. We've got Lucky, Lucky Impala, and I'm blocking the scores a little bit. We can see the top score at least. Lucky Impala, really quick. Impalas are fast. So here we go with the next one. Remember, we are on like a four second delay. So if you see the answer and you know it, click it. I'm going to give little hints as the questions get harder. Here we go. Which of the following helps us identify variables? Which of the following? Which of the following phrases helps identify identifier variables? And I'm going to try to get out of the way of these questions. Which of the following phrases helps us identify identifier variables? So be very specific here. Identifiers are unique categorical variables. So they're unique categorical variables. So think about what you would ask for a unique categorical variable. Um, so it is true, we kind of talk about them as their own thing, but they are technically categorical variables, technically, but they're groups of one. So you would say, which one? So it's very technical here. We tricked a lot of people, but think about what which group would be used for. Does anyone have any idea what which group would be here? I didn't hear identifier. Oh no, I'll try to speak as clearly as possible and I'll try not to mess everyone up. You can always be like, I don't trust Brian and I'll read the question. But when you look at an identifier, you got it, Andrew, right there. We got it. Great to see you in here, Andrew. Um, so we've got which group would be categorical and which one is identifier because it's asking which one. And I'm trying to think, you know what I can do? I think if I go down here, I won't block questions for the most part. I might block a little bit of the answers, but hopefully I'm out of the way-ish. So I'm going to try to stay as far as I can over. And I can just be like, get out of the way. Okay. So I think we get this. The big note we should have is that identifiers are unique for each and every observation. It's just a mad, mad world. You, identifiers are unique for each observation, and they identify which thing we are talking about. Identifiers are unique for each observation, and they identify which thing we are talking about. They are a special type of categorical variable. So who do we have? Oh my gosh, this is a shakeup of the leaderboard. A huge shakeup of the leaderboard. Lovely Macaw and Kind Camel. That's such happy names. So let's see here who is going to take the lead with the next question. Maybe another shakeup will occur. As we have which of the following graphics can be used for univariate categorical. So when you hear univariate categorical, you should think one and categorical variable. That's what it is. So you'd have something that is like favorite pet. 
Could you put someone's favorite pet in a histogram? Not like in it, but like display the data of favorite pet with histogram. No, histograms are univariate quantitative. How about box plot? Wait a minute, histograms and box plots go together. So wait a minute, bar chart and pie chart? You can make a bar of your favorite pies and a pie of your favorite bars. So there's two right answers here. Bar chart and pie, we tricked a lot of people. Oh no, we tricked a lot of people. Here's some big notes we should have. The big notes, <laughs> the pin is hidden. The big notes we should have are that bar charts and pie charts go together. Bar charts and pie charts go together. And with this in mind, a bar and a pie are used for univariate categorical data, where a box plot and a histogram are used for univariate quantitative. Does everyone have this big note? And remember, if you have questions at any time, ask them. Because bars and pies, think about this. Let me ask you guys, what is your favorite, uh, like, let's say, type of pie? Favorite type of pie? Mine is Oreo cream pie. It's so awesome. Or, you know, apple pie with cinnamon. That might be like number two. What's number three? Key lime pie? Oh my gosh. Or any sort of, if you count cheesecake as a pie, it's probably not a pie. Cheesecake, peach pie, key lime pie, all this great stuff. So when you say this right here, this is a categorical response. So think of bars and pies going together. Bar chart of your favorite pies, pie chart of your favorite bars, and pizza pie. <laughs> I like some pizza pie too. It is. Kind of a pie, isn't it? So we got a lot of votes for key lime right here. Key lime is some good stuff when it's got that little bite of sour. And so whenever you think about these questions, ask yourself, just pause, say, wait a minute, bar chart of my favorite pie and a pie chart of my favorite bars. So you could ask somebody their favorite bar and they could tell you Oreo anything. I agree. And so when you think about this, ask yourself, peach pie, awesome. And that is a categorical response. But when you do box plots and histograms, that would be like, how many pets do you own? Because then we can make a bar box plot, excuse me, or a histogram. So there's a very different response to a univariate quantitative question as opposed to a univariate categorical question. So good job. We've got a shake up of the leaderboard right here. Oh my gosh, the whole board is changing around. We only have two people. If you've gotten a question wrong, don't feel bad. It looks like there's only two people who know everything. But do they know this next question? Which of the following graphics can be used for bivariate categorical variables? Bivariate categorical variables. Bivariate, and I'm hoping I selected both answers. Because there are two answers here that work. And there's two answers, another group of two answers that are kind of similar. So when you think about this right here, look at what goes together. A time plot is a special case scatter plot. They're both bivariate quantitative and a contingency table and a mosaic plot go together. Oh no. <laughs> yep. So it should be both those. You got it. We tricked some people with the scatter plot. We re remember what is condition one for scatter plots? Scatter plots need what for the condition? When you hear scatter plot, what should you think? Scatter plots. Da, 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 da. You guys know what I'm saying? You got it kneeling right there. You know what we're talking about. Some QQ straight enough. No outliers. So QQ means bivariate quantitative. People always say, why do you say QQ? Quantitative quantitative is what makes a scatter plot. Scatter plots can be used to look at correlation, to look at uh, to look at uh, regression lines, all that great stuff. QQ, straight enough, no outliers. It was so good having Matt here. I hope they're having fun watching this. So my brain knows these, it just can't go so <laughs> Ask all the questions. We're just playing a game. You're here to learn, take notes as we do it. It's for fun. So this is just seeing, it's getting your brain ready. And being like, when I see bivariate quant categorical, I think two categorical variables need to be displayed. And a contingency table will show us the categorical variables. And a mosaic plot will um, do a drawing of it. It's a drawing of it. I'm going to put a call out. If anyone knows some sort of software you can put on your computer that's maybe freeware, or maybe I'd even pay for it, that you can annotate on the screen. Because I'd really love to annotate over the Kahoot, and I've never had that ability. That would help out a lot, I think. But if anyone knows software, uh, you can email me and tell me about it. Just make sure it's like their freeware or like legitimate software. Um, so if you know of a way to do that, that I could just literally start writing on the screen right now, I would draw you a mosaic plot, contingency table, scatter plot, all the good stuff. I can go to a Word document, but then we'd leave the code. So guess what it is? It's time for another, is it still, is it playing the Kahoot music? Can you guys hear Kahoot music? Can you see me? I don't see the Kahoot music playing anymore. Oh, because the question ended. Oh, the question ended. I got scared. Here we go. 
Yeah, I think when the question ends, the music stops. I was looking at the Kahoot music and I was like, where's the music? Epic Pony and Social Hen. Amazing job. Amazing job. Guess what? We need some Kahoot music and we need a question right here. Let's do this. So here we go. Which of the following graphics can be used for univariate quantitative data? This is a review question now. We got some music back. Univariate quantitative, this is a quick one, so be clicking it. You should think, wait a minute, I need to display one quantitative variable. And I hope I selected all of these. Please tell me I did. Because there's only one wrong answer on here. Woo! Okay, wait. What note should we have? It's a check mark. Oh, it's all right. Don't worry. So wait, if you're taking notes right now, make sure you know that box plots, histograms, stem and leaves, and dot plots are all univariate quantitative displays of data. Does everyone hear that? Let's. It's everything on the screen that you see with a check mark. So we got box plot, histogram, stem and leaf, and dot plot. Those are all univariate quantitative displays of data. Univariate categorical, we are missing one. Let's see. I'm going to throw a secret 50 points out right now for the first person who tells me one of the the univariate categorical display that we have not talked about yet. You got it, Neil. And not that one. You got dot plots. Yes, but I want a univariate categorical we haven't talked about. We got bars. We got pies. We're talking about them. Pareto, Neil, and got the secret 50 points right there. And remember, there is points for the winners of this. And you are getting points just for playing along. So you're still getting your streamlined points for just being here playing along. So if you do lose, don't worry. You got points for playing. So you got it. And for talking, you guys know it. So Pareto is a special case bar chart that has been put in order. If these are the responses right here, this is a categorical. This is a bar chart. This is literally a bar chart. Is this bar chart a Pareto chart? Is this bar chart a Pareto chart? Yes or no? Is this bar chart a Pareto chart? The answer is no, because it has not been put in order. We could put it in order and then it would be a Pareto chart. Pareto charts are special case bar charts that have been put in order. So your univariate categorical displays are bar chart, pie chart, and Pareto. Oh, <laughs> Claire, then you got it. Claire got 50 also. Sorry. I promise you I don't cheat. You'd be like, Brian, you always pick a certain... No, I don't. I swear I don't cheat. Okay, let's see who's in the lead. Oh my gosh, these scores are going crazy. You guys are going crazy right here. This is Epic Pony just galloping to the lead and Social Hen talking to everyone, getting all those answers. Lucky Impala, get more, be more lucky. Be more lucky right here. Fabulous Seal and lovely Macau. So let's see what happens with the next question. Find the IQR of the distribution. Now let's break down what the IQR is as we look at this. The IQR is the interquartile range, but wait a minute. We don't have numbers to subtract right here. We don't have any way of mathematically doing it. How could we ever figure out the, wait a minute. I'm hearing something in my head. The IQR can be seen in the box plot. The IQR is the very bottom of the box to the very top of the box. This is the median and this is the mean. This is also the min because lowest value. So maybe zero to two, which would make it two. Wow, you guys did amazing on that one. That was I think we stumped some people though because we didn't have as many answers. But if you look at this, so the box right here, if you trace it down, you can see the highest observations are eight. Can anyone tell me where the upper fence goes to? This is a really good um, question right here, too. And so the mathematics was 2 minus 0, because it's Q3 minus Q1. Um, you're right. It goes to 5. Why does the upper fence go to 5? So this is this is the Q1, and it's also the, the minimum. Because this is the number of pets people own. So 25% of people own 0 or less pets, which is 0. So it's number of pets you own. You can't... Oh, no, don't worry. Review the tape. It's pretty tricky. And that was a quick one. I do agree. That was quick. I should put more time on these. Um, but I think a lot of people are doing that. The You guys got it. Josh put an amazing equation in the chat right there. He said 1.5 IQRs above Q3. And that makes these people who own six pets, you're like, whoa, that's a lot of pets. You know, if your friend says to you they have two, three, or four pets at their house, you're like, that's not that. I mean, that's a lot. If they say they have five, you're like, that's starting to get to a lot. But as soon as your friends say six, seven, eight pets, you're like, whoa, you have six pets? Just think of an outlier as your whoa. You're like Joey from, what was that show? Whoa. I can't do his whoa. <laughs> um, but there is no low outlier down here. The minimum is zero and 25% of people are less. Um, Carly, hopefully I'll help out with this. The IQR is the middle 50%. 
Now, this box plot is a little bit weird because this is the minimum here and it is Q1. Does everyone see the box plot? We'll show you Q1, uh, the min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. Those things I just said right there are the what? The min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max, which stand for 0% of the data, 25%, 50%, 75%, and the max are the five number summary. So when we look at the box plot, we should identify those locations. Be very careful though. Some box plots look a little bit different. This box plot right here has a minimum of zero pets. The bottom of the box plot, which is also the lowest value, is the Q1, which is the 25th percentile. The line in the middle of the box plot is 50%, or the 50th percentile, which is the median, which is right here. Now, there could be weird things where the median could be at 0.5 because maybe there were two people in the middle who had zero and one, and we had to average them together it to, to get the median. But this says that the 50th percentile of people own one or less pets, and the 50% 50, 50 of people own one or more pets. So this is the middle person in the data set. And if there's not a middle person, like if you have four observations, you would average together the people right there. If you had five people, which is a very small data set, the middle person would be this person right here. So this is the middle person in the data set and they own one pet. So 50% of people own one or more pets, 50% of people own one or less pets. But if you do Q3 minus Q1, like the equation, don't you get one? Ah, Q, so this is Q1. And this is Q3. Go ahead right now. There we go, Isaac. Thank you so much. It's two minus zero because this is Q3 and this is Q1. This is kind of what we call Q2. It's the median, but it's the because two quarters is 50%. So that is uh, the median right there. And you guys got a great job in the chat right there. Great work. And I see people even like clarifying and helping each other out. That's what we want to see. Yes, I like when people say, oh, I see it now. I understand. And then wait, is this the maximum? This is just where the whisker goes up to. Is this the maximum or, or are these the maximum? Where's the maximum at? Now, <laughs> like a net, nah, it's not the maximum. This is the maximum here and it's an outlier. You'll also notice that this data is discrete, throwback term, because it's, it's whole numbers. So you can't own two and a half pets. And you'll notice right here, this is where outliers begin. There is a data point here, as we see there is data here. And someone did own five pets, maybe a few people by the counts of observations. But this is where outliers begin because it's 1.5 IQRs above. So people were showing the mathematics earlier of 1.5 IQRs above Q3. You could have a low observation. Where Where is the lower fence? Okay, range to use outlier. Yes. Great question right there, Hannah. The range of this would be eight because it'd be max minus min, which is the biggest number minus the smallest. If we did have low outliers, where would low outliers begin? Where is the lower fence? There really isn't one, but where technically is it? It's 1.5 IQRs below Q1. Now, I, this is a, I don't know, because you can't, there, there really isn't one, but like mathematically, where is it calculated to? 50 points first person, where's the lower fence? Mathematically, Justin got it. Justin, you are right. Because three is 1.5 IQRs below zero. Does that make sense? So zero is where this is at. And then what's an IQR? It's two. So it's 1.5 IQRs below zero. Does that make sense? One and a half IQRs is three, so it's three below zero. Does that make yes? You guys are seeing it now. Good. That's and you see how this is three above, and this would be three below if there was a fence. You just don't see it. The fences are invisible. It's like this red line you draw right here, and the data goes up to the fence. I don't think the box plot stuff is too, too super complicated on the test, but if you know how to read this one, you understood what I was saying, and you're cluing in better, and it's refreshing in your mind. You're probably okay on box plot stuff. So good job right there. Good review of box plots. And when you have questions asked, we're here to win and we're here to get good grades on the test. So let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Whoa, shake up. Lovely Macau. I want to see lovely Macau in third place after this. You got this lovely Macau. I don't know who you are, but you got this. Was it, was it Jeff? I can't remember. Which distribution has the biggest range? Uh-oh, tricky question right here. Look, look, da, da, da. I'm half giving it away. Be very careful. Be very careful. There's tricks in this. Which one has the biggest range? We're going to trick a lot of people with this, and I partially gave it away. The range is the maximum minus the min. So whenever you're looking at a range, make sure you take note of outliers. Make sure you use outliers to calculate the range. That's a huge note right there. Make sure you use outliers to calculate the range. Oh, no. I tricked everybody. I did it. So we let's, I, I don't know. There it is right here. 
I know, I know, I know, I know I tricked you. Watch the video, I hover over it. I'll try to drop hints. I know where people usually make mistakes. Not that I'm reusing a coot I've already made. Um, the range for this one is obviously the largest. When you see it, it's like, oh, I get it. But you know what's, okay, tell me this much. Would you rather miss the question on the Kahoot or the test? Which one, and if you miss this, you're like, oh, I gotta watch for those outliers. If you, would you, which one would you rather miss? The Kahoot or the test? <laughs> Kahoot. Some people are like, the test, I wanna win the Kahoot. <laughs> You win the Kahoot, you fail the test. That's not good. So um, you'll remember, I think, the test. <laughs> so um, we see here that outliers need to be remembered when calculating the range. On campus has the biggest range. It's something like 4.8 because we go from zero all the way up to here. So on campus definitely has the biggest range. Yeah, Keaton, we got we to gotta make sure we're Kahoot all the way on this. So we see that the on campus has the biggest range right here. Definitely it's on campus. Um, this has the biggest IQR. The highest median looks to be here. If you're wondering what this is, this is what's called the grand mean. Don't worry about it. It's just the average of all the data points. It's like the average of every distribution. We call it the grand mean, like for all the data. It's just a little, like sometimes we're like, what does that line mean? It's the grand mean. So I mean, you can ask, I'll tell you anything. So um, don't put it in. <laughs> Let's see, lovely Macau. Oh, good job. I don't know why I'm rooting for them. If it's you, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for everybody, but I don't know. I like that name. So here we go with the next question. Time to find out which of the following is not a way to describe univariate quantitative data. Univariate quantitative. So when you look at that histogram right there, you should think three things. So there's a fourth thing on here, which is not one of the ways. Mm, 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 <laughs> it's going to sound weird when I hear that recording. So the four things are strength, direction, unusual features. And I skipped the one that is on here that shouldn't be on here for the univariate. And I'll explain why. So the three ways are shape, center, and spread. You guys got it. So shape, center, spread are the three ways we describe a histogram. So think about shape. When you think about shape, this is a unimodal right skew distribution with some gaps and outliers. When you think about center, this is going to be a review question in a moment. Since this is skewed, what would be the best measure of center? Let's see it in the chat. It's going to be a review question very soon on this Kahoot, because I remember doing it. What is going to be the measure of center on this? There's only two you should be picking from. You got it. It's the median because it's skewed. Remember, if you go in the order of shape, you'll figure out the shape first, and then you'll know to talk about a certain measure of center based on the shape. Why is it median? Because it's skewed, and the median is not heavily impacted by outliers. It's not impacted at all. You got it right there. Skewed means median. So what do we have next? Yep. And outliers influence something else. Like if we were talking about the, the spread of this. Now there's three measures of spread. Um, why is there three? Well, there's always range. I mean, but range uses outliers. Um, there's two others. And which one would we use for a measure of spread for this? Think of the box plot. Something we were just talking about. What would be the measure? You got it, Carly. Nice job. It's the IQR. And so the standard deviation goes with the median and the... Standard deviation goes with the mean, and the median goes with the IQR. If I misspeak, please tell me. Um, but the two things are paired, as in median and IQR. And I just want you to think about this. Tell I want someone to have this aha moment that I had. The median is this, and the IQR is this. They're both based off of what? The median and the IQRs are both based off of what? And like, oh, they're kind of the same, like, idea. The median is like the blank or something, and the IQR is the... They're both in the five number summary. You're right. They're both in the five number summary. They're both based off quartiles. The median is the 50th percentile and the IQR is the 25th through 75th percentile, the range of it. So they're both measures of data based on percentiles and they go together and they're, they're hanging out in the five number summary. So whenever you think median, well, it goes with the IQR. It's up here in this box plot being displayed to you. So the mean and standard deviation are used for normal curves. That's why we talk about the mean and standard deviation of normally distributed data. And then we can turn those into z-scores. And if you think about the z-score formula, the z-score formula is based off of observation minus mean over standard deviation. It literally uses the concepts of mean and standard deviation to talk about a standardized metric of distance away, like how many z-scores something is away. So kind of a quick review right there. Please ask questions if you have it. I know I'm hitting you with a lot of information. Sometimes it just really helps to hear these things again and again and again and again and again and again. Again and again, 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 again. <laughs> uh, let's go to the next question right here before I have too much fun. Okay, next question. Here we go. Oh no, lovely Macau, no. 
Lucky Impala. I should have put all my money on Lucky Impala right there out of one. Let me go a little brighter. I don't know if I like that. There we go. Here we go with the next question. What is the best measure of center for this distribution? Boom, we should be like instantaneous on this. You're going to be like, I know the best measure of center because there's only two measures of center on this screen right now. Those other ones over there on that other side, those aren't measures of center. Those are measures of spread. Right here, we've got two measures of center to pick from. Choose your favorite one, but make sure it's one the right one. So if you like one, pick it. Which one are you picking? Who knows what the best measure of center is? Now you might be saying, well, why? How do we pick the measure of center? Based on the shape, and we just said that that is unimodal, very right skewed with outliers and gaps. I really got some outliers. It is the median. Nice job. Great job. You guys know that one pretty quick and, quick and clear right now. So let's go on to the next question. Let's see. Lucky Macau. Lovely Macau. <gasps> yes. 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 It's going to happen. I'm putting too much pressure on them. Okay, let's continue on right here. I want the whole, I want the whole, everyone cheering for them. Here we go to the next one here. Let's do it. Next question coming up right now. Get ready. You probably guess what is the best measure of spread? We've only got two possible answers to pick from. The best measure of spread. Now, range is a possibility, but it's not really good due to outliers. But this data is heavily, 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 heavily skewed. Since the data is skewed, which is the shape of the distribution, we should pick what for the measure of spread? Since it's skewed, what should we be picking for measure of spread? I think everyone knows that since we picked the median just a moment ago, it'll go with the IQR. Nice job. And you can always put it in the chat. If you're quick enough to put it in the chat, that means you've already gotten the answer and you're here to learn. You're here to practice. So make sure you realize this is a big thing. There was a few more wrong answers. So I slow down a little bit when there's more wrong answers. It's a good way for me to judge how the class is doing. Spread is only two things. What should you have in your notes? That the two measures of spread we pick from are what or what? The two measures of spread we pick from are what or what? The two measures of spread we pick from are what or what? You got it. And standard deviation goes with mean for normally distributed data. And IQR goes with median for, um, as in like the median is the measure of center and the IQR is the measure of spread for skewed data, for non-normal data. Because either data is normal or not normal. So if you have good reason that the mean and standard deviation are not reliable, you'll use median and IQR for measures of center and spread respectively. So the measures of center and spread respectively are, for normal data, they are mean and standard deviation. And for skewed data, they are median and IQR. And that is the measures of center and spread, which we decide upon based on the shape of the distribution. So first thing you always look at is shape, and that'll determine for this one that the center is best described by the median and the IQR is best described by the, or the skew, <laughs> spread. The spread is best described by the IQR due to the skewness of this distribution. Um, kind of similar. First thing you look at, Sam, right here is the shape of the distribution. And the shape of this distribution is skewed to the right with some outliers. And because of that shape, we are going to now use the median as a measure of center. And the IQR is paired with the median as a measure of spread. So IQR and median, or median and IQR are the measures of center and spread for skewed data. And so kind of understanding which is used for when. Does that make sense there, Sam? Does that help out? You're welcome, Sam. Thank you for the question. Thank you. I put my money on the right, the right one right here. Social hen. Social hen, you, you can win too. I'm gonna, no, okay, okay, wait a minute. Now I got a epic pony right here. I'm putting my money on epic pony now. I've, I've taken all my money off of lovely Macau. Now I'm betting on epic pony. We're going to see if, if Brian actually helps out. Let's see this. Which way is this distribution skewed? This is easy. We got this. This is like, boom. Which way is this one skewed? I've already been saying this answer. This is a quick one. You're like, oh, you know this instantaneously. That's why there's 20 seconds right here. You're like, I got this. Boom. Free points. Free points right here. Right to the high, left to the low, whatever way that tail goes. What way does that tail go? Right to the high, left to the low. Oh, no, kid, no. You know, I'm so sorry, Keaton. Right to the high, left to the low, whatever way the tail goes. You know what I think it was? I'm so sorry that the answers are on the... I know, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's so... I'm sorry, Kahoot did that. Damn, you could... I have it mixing up the answers, because a lot of times when I do right answers, I always put the right answer first. That way I know I put the right answer and I check it. So I have it mix it up. Um... I'm so sorry. That's Brian's fault. 
I think everyone knows, though. So the two answers were Brian's fault. It hasn't changed. I'm so sorry. Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? I apologize. I guess there's a 50-50 shot of Kahoot will put him in the right order when I run that question. Or I could just not randomize them, and you could just click the first answer every time because you know my strategy for building Kahoots. Lucky Impala. Not so lucky when Epic Pony wins. Let's find out with the next question. What is Q3 for this data? Another box plot question, which we should be able to identify pretty easily. The Q3 for the data is going to be identified somewhere in the box plot. I think everyone knows this by now. Q3 is somewhere in the box plot. Somewhere. Is it here? Well, that's like the most extreme data point that's not an outlier. That's the median. Wait a minute. Okay, so that's the max. That's the median. That's the that's the min and the Q1. Kind of a review question. A little bit easier. Oh, wait a minute. Trace down. There we go. That's it. It's two. A little bit of an easy question. We should do pretty well on this one. Um, people should know how to read box plots. Good stuff right there. Um, this part five right here, be very careful. Uh, five is, and I think that's why I did. Did I do Q3? Yeah, I did Q3. A lot of people think that this right here is like one of the numbers in the five number summary. This is just the most extreme point that's not an outlier. Um, so it's not actually a point in the five number summary. And once again, the mean, the min and the Q1 are both right here. They overlap. It's just that 25% of people own zero pets or less and the lowest amount of pets people own is zero. So they overlap. It's just the data sets like zero, 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 one, two, 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 something like that. But um, there's there's a lot of people who own no pets. Like I don't have a pet right now. I have a bunny soon. Bunny. And um, yep. I got lemurs. I should have counted the lemurs. I'm sorry, guys. Lemur gets to be here for the next question. Gets to sit on my shoulders. There we go. We got the lemur joining us in on the next question. Lucky lemur right here behind my head. So let's do this. Um, like similar ask, I would say a lot of, and, and here's the thing I really like, uh, Jeff was here, Jeff took part in our cahoots and he did, uh, pretty well. Now it won't be rapid fire like this cahoot is. So I pick a lot of things that I see people get wrong during the test and I do them as review questions during cahoots. So I usually look to prior tests and see where people struggle and what questions people miss the most. And then I build cahoots from these, like Adam saying, study these cahoots. So yeah. And Adam, you took, did you take exam two and three online? Just last semester, you took two and three online. So there we go. We'll see. Lemur's very interested in that. Yep. And do you think the cahoots were very helpful or similar ask? I'm not saying they're just like your practice, your test, but similar ask. And thank you, Adam, for being here so much. So um, advice from former students right there and current students like that. Um, any other advice, Adam, you have for being successful? They Their first test is open right now. Um, very similar to what you guys were taking for exam two and three. Um, so any advice you have for them? that you want to give the lemur can't see around my hair. We'll see. I might start things. Yeah. Cahoots helped me as well as going through the quizlets and understanding the concepts. Yep. I've got quizlets posted to stat to one.utk.edu. So check those out. That's got all the resources. Um, so <laughs> awesome. Cool. Let's do the next question right here. You guys ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Oh, we got a lock on the best on the top people right here. We got the top ones right there. Here we go to the next question right here. Let's do it. Okay. What do you think, Lemur? What are the possible options to add to a pivot chart? Oh, wait. What are possible options? Do you want to help out? You're helping out? You're going to help out? Which one? Wait. Okay. Lemur's helping out. Oh, wait. It's saying this one right here. You send that one? Okay. That's good. What other ones? What other ones do you want to say? This one right here? Oh, you're saying that one? You can add a chart tile too? You can add data labels? Yeah. Is there anything? Wait, can you add data tables? Oh, yeah. We do it all the time. Oh, you are so right, Lemur. Oh, my gosh. You can add all of these? These are all options? They are? <laughs> it jumped away. <laughs> they are all options right here. These are all options. Everyone's clicking access tile because the Lemur gave that one away first. But, um... <laughs> Too much fun with this. Um, but these are all options. And these are found under that plus icon. And so if you think about what can improve, people often wondering like, what could be a good question for pivot tables and pivot charts? You can add like anything you want to a pivot table and pivot chart, like chart title, access titles, data, labels, data labels, data tables. You can add error margins, all these other things. But these are all things that can be added to a pivot table, pivot chart. So every one of these can be added right here. Um, so once again, if you see a pivot chart and it's like, what could be used to improve this? Chart titles, access titles, data labels, data tables. So good stuff right there. Good stuff. Did we have a change in the leaderboard? Let's see. Whoa. 
This is craziness. They're just fighting it out. They're they're all this is like a race. I know the points are a little bit apart, but they're all just like running after each other. Oh my gosh. Don't worry if you don't win, but this is a this is a big race. Let's see here. Lucky and Paul. I'm betting on you, Epic Pony. Epic Pony, I want to see you. I know Lovely Macau was the one I was betting on to start, but Epic Pony, I want to see you. I want to see you win. Which of the following is a field we can edit in a pivot chart? Which of the following is a field we can edit? So we've got here, which of the following is a field we can edit in a pivot chart? I'm making sure I know the answer. But there's four fields, right? Did I do it again? Did I give an answer? You can answer them all. Did I? What's that? Greg Kelly, you say you can edit this one and this one? Wait, what? You can edit this one? That's one over there? Doesn't work. So, yep, you can edit them all. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. What did I just move? What did I just move? I hope I didn't just move something important. Don't mess with things live, Brian. Don't do that. All of them. So you should have, well, let's pause here for a moment. You should have a general understanding of what all of these can do. Um, you can filter out certain observations. You can, um, columns and rows divide things apart. And then the value field is very important. The value field setting is what you're actually displaying. Like the value field setting is like the value you're displaying of that field. So these are all fields you can edit. There's four of them. If you remember that, like four by four quadrant, that's what I immediately thought to when I thought of this. I'm like, okay, wait, there's a four by four quadrant with rows, columns, um, filters and values. But one thing I should say is I think they changed it to columns. They changed the name of it. What do they call it? When you look at the pivot chart, it sometimes changes the names, but this is what they're called in a pivot table. I said chart there, um, but I wouldn't try to trick you. And please tell me if you think a question on the test was too tricky. You guys got it. We're going to do something right now. You ready? I just want to see what the latency is on this. What is filter? Like, let's say we did an example in class, like where we want to filter out Tennessee students or non-Tennessee students. You can add a variable into the filter and then it'll remove that variable from being used. So, or that level of that variable. So if you add something to filter, you can be like, okay, let me filter out people with above a 4.0 GPA. Cause you could want to look at um, people in scholarships or something. You could say, well, let's look at people between the ranges of zero and two or some, or like zero and three, like, and then let's filter out these people above this. So we can only focus on these people. And maybe you want to look at like what state people were born in and if they got a scholarship like to UT or something. So then you'd put GPA in the filter and then you could filter out certain GPAs like above a certain value. Or if you wanted to look at for only athletes or something, you could put athlete in the filter and then you could remove out athletes or non-athletes, whatever you want to be looking at in your chart. So it, it's like a variable you're not including, including, but you're filtering on because you could do it by athlete or you could just filter out a certain group that you want to remove. Yeah, it make, the more you talk about it, the more you think about it, that's what it takes. We had a person be like, what's it mean? And they're like, oh, it makes sense now. Um, okay, we're gonna do something right here. What I want you to do is type SNAP, snap, but I do not want you to type snap until you see me snap. And if you're way behind on this, so I don't want you to hit enter yet, so no one should be hit enter yet, but I want you to have it typed. And then when you hear me snap into the microphone, I want you to then hit enter immediately when you hear it. So I'm gonna see what the latency is on it. If you're not live, you can click the live button and you'll be watching live. So here we go. When you hear me snap, hit enter on snap. You ready? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one. So it looks like some people, oof, we got some people on like a uh, 10 second delay here. So um, do this, try hitting, um, reload the page at the top of your screen, just in case. So go to the very, <laughs> so Sam, Sam, you were the fastest right there. You were three seconds on it. Sam was at three. And so go to the very top of the page and do it again. You guys ready? We're going to go to the top of the page and reload it. And this is a good thing to do while watching the Kahoot sometimes, especially between questions. If you want, if you feel like you're falling behind, reload the top of the page with the reload your page button. And so get ready, have snap written again. So <laughs> there we go. We got the live on. So have snap ready to go. And we're about to do it again. So have snap written out. And then when you hear snap, I want you to type snap. I mean, I want you to hit enter. So you should have it written. And then when you hear it, you ready? So everyone's reloaded. Here we go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six. It must have changed the latency on YouTube. And I must need, I might need to improve my questions. I mean, my uh, length of questions. I want to make sure people have enough time so the latency can be a thing. We used to have like a three second. Maybe it's when I broadcast from UT, I get that three seconds latency. But I, I try to use ultra low. And I might start using Twitch more often. And if we use Twitch, you guys got to help me out. We need a big start to the Twitch channel. I say it. You guys don't have to help me out. I just want the Twitch channel to be big. <laughs>
Okay, enough about me, more about you. Let's get back to test questions here. You ready? We had our fun. That was our mid Kahoot fun. Epic Pony. I'm gonna stop betting you on you. You're doing a great job though. You're getting the questions right. So let's do this right here. You ready? With the next question. Next question. Here we go. On the standard normal curve, what percent of area is above plus two Z score? What percent of area is above here? Now there's two answers on this that are preposterous. So you should think between negative two and positive two is what? Between negative two and positive two is what? 95. Outside of it, it's 2.5 on either side. Sorry, I gave away the answer. Oh no. Is it above? It is above. Good. Good. You guys did pretty well on this. Try drawing out the picture right now. I can't, I can't really switch to it. Wait, can I? I might be able to. I might, well, oh, cool. I can do that. So what you want to do whenever you see a question like this, because these could appear on the test, you never know, is you want to draw out your picture. So maybe I can switch between stuff and do negative two and positive two. Between it is 95% of the area. And then what do you do? You want this area above it. Now, mine's not really to scale, but you want to remember that 2.5 is on either side of it. So I can switch over to the screen pretty easily. And I think I'll pop the other one back. But, and that's not really to scale. Yeah, I like these questions too. I'd, I'd do a whole test on them if we could. Look at that. We can bring it back up, I think. I think I know a way to do it to hop between screens. But that's kind of the graphic for it. I like these questions too. Quick and easy. I think we got another one coming up. Let's get ready for it. Here we go. On the standard normal curve, what percent of area is below plus one? So you want to identify where Z-score is at. You're right here. Start drawing it in your head and you'll have a good guess. If you realize you're going below here, you should have a pretty good guess from these numbers on here. Now you should be able to also figure these out um, by hand. Like you should be able to do the drawing that I do and know the 68, 95, 99.7, which none of those are the answer. And so let's see if you guys get the answer right here. What percent of the area is below positive one? I'm gonna solve this two ways right here. I'm gonna solve it two ways. Do people get it? Great job. It is 84, nice work. So let's take a look right here. Here's two ways of solving it. The two ways to solve it are as follows. Probably the quickest way to solve this using the empirical rule. Well, one, we should know the number 68, 95, 99.7. And we go right here and we draw our 68. And inside if one plus or minus one is 68. And then outside is 16 because 32 total. I think people realize that. Why are these 16? Because it's half of 32, because 68 inside, 32 outside. And then if you add up across these number lines, you will get 68 because you're concerned about this area here. Another quick way of solving it, just kind of another uh, way to solve it, is to say you have 68 between here and here, like we just did. We have 68%. Well, then if you cut this in half, which it should look like half, you'd have 34 here. Now you don't have to worry about that because below here is 50. And so now you just add up across this. So now it's the same sort of solving, but a different way. Yep, Morgan got it right there. It's just another way to solve it. So there's 50% below the middle and half of 34 is 68. You got it. Multiple ways, just knowing how to solve it. Good stuff. This is the empirical rule. You should know 68, 95, 99.7. You guys are doing excellent. Grades are amazing right now. Like I'm so proud of everybody. And even if the grades are just as good as they normally are, grades are usually pretty good, but you guys are doing great. Keep doing your quizzes, keep doing, coming to class, keep doing the notation because what you're doing is working. So keep it up. And don't worry if for some reason the test doesn't go perfectly. You make a 60, you make a 70. You're like, oh, I made a 70. Brr, 85. You make a 60. Oh, I made it. You made an 80. So we got this. The quizzes are going to be the biggest help. Online tests are a little bit tougher. So keep doing every quiz. We got this. Okay, here we go. Next one. Fabulous Seal is back. Good job, Fabulous Seal. Who'd you knock off? I don't know. Here we go. What percent of students are expected to make below a 60? Sounds like we no longer have Z-scores. 60? <laughs> 60 is a Z-score of negative 1. 60 is a Z-score of negative 1. How do I identify that? Well, the mean of this curve is 70 with a standard deviation of 10. And we have right here that this is a Z-score of negative 1. So 68% is inside of here. 32% is outside of here. And below 60 is going to be what? This is called what I would call an in-context problem. 
<laughs> you guys are too funny in the chat. Oh, uh, 16, you got it. I think we get these. I'm going to do the next one. Uh, this I'll draw it out just in case. I don't know if someone watches this video later and is like, wait, 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 I don't get it. Uh, it's actually this drawing. Uh, because it's this drawing right here. I think this is why I made it this way, because we're using the same information. Because now the mean is... Eight, no, is 60? What was the mean? Can you guys tell me what the mean was? Was it 70 with a standard deviation of 10? I remember the standard deviation of 10. And it's the same sort of problem right here. I think that's it. I think it was, right? Yep. Thank you very much, Erica. Great work. So um, that's what it is right there. 70 with standard deviation of 10. Yep. And then you can draw it out. And then the z-score for this would be 0. 70 has a z-score of 0. So just knowing this pretty well, I love these questions. Once you understand them, once you understand the normal model, it's very useful. Has anyone seen the normal model or z-scores in any other class other than this? It's, it's like one of the most commonly used things of all statistics, like the normal model and z-scores. So understanding them to a certain degree is very important. And knowing that it's just like a distribution that shows you the percent of stuff we would expect to see within certain variation. Yeah, Morgan's seen it. Nice job. So it's, it's pretty common. It's one of the most widely used statistical topics. So good stuff. Good to understand it. Have a good idea of what it all means. And that's what we're here to do in this class. Help you understand stuff for your major, your discipline, other topics. Or do business analytics. I like business analytics. Uh, only if you want. Business analytics, some other majors for others. <laughs> Next question right here. What percent of students are expected to make above a 55? Oh, did I do a tricky one on this one? I think I did. Okay, wait a minute. This is not on the curve itself, but we have a shaded in there. Oh, it's above a 55. Oh no, it's above this. I tried to trick myself even. Slow down, slow down. No answers yet. It's above this line right here, which kind of clues us in on what the answer could be. I'm putting in the line myself. So if everyone notices, I'm drawing the line right here. Wait a minute. Can anyone in the chat help me out? What is the Z-score for 55? The Z-score for 55 is negative 1.5. And the Z-score for this one looks to be 1.5. It's almost like this little area is a hint right here. But this little area, I can't figure it out. It's not showing me it. So above 80, we said is 16% because 68 inside, 32 outside, 16. And this right here would be 2.5. So this area could be like, let's say 10%. Now watch out. I made this way too tricky. Because then you have to flip it and then you have to know the other area. The answer is going to be this one. I'll explain. This is a, tr this is a tough question. Whoa! Maybe everyone clicked it when I said it, but we got a delay. That was really tough. So we're going to call... I'll show you how it's done. Let me show you the work. Amazing. Wow. That that whoa was not on purpose. That I mean, like not like me being like, whoa, was so cool. I was like... I was waiting for the answers to be all over the place and like, be like, oh. And then I was like, amazing work. I said you guys are doing really great. Just keep it up. Let's go. You guys are doing great. Uh, just keep your energy going. Keep coming to class in the morning. Keep it up. Keep doing the quizzes. Keep taking notes. And then in three weeks from now, you'll be like, done with stat tool one. Done with it. Stat tool one, done. No more stats. Unless you want stats. Then do more stats. <laughs> uh, stat nations, let's go. I'm, I'm going to be making something like that this weekend. So if you're wondering how we got that answer, amazing job right there. If you got it wrong, don't worry. It was probably someone who got it right who guessed. <laughs> just by the law of numbers, just how they work. Okay, so I'm going to turn these into z-scores, which we can do. So we have right here that this is what was shown to us. The graphics show... That was <laughs> you guys are awesome. Negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, so what we know about this area right here is that this area here has to be something less than 16% because that red area I'm shading is 16. And this area right here has to be more than 2.5. So I'm going to come up with a fake number right here of 7%, which is really going to help me out. But this number here of 7%, or we could use this area somewhere between, we'll use the real numbers. It's somewhere between 2.5% to 16%. That's correct. Good. That area right here is somewhere between 2.5 because from here over, is 16 and from here over is 2.5. So it's it's more than this area, but it's less than this area. Does everyone see how I'm figuring out that? Does everyone understand that to a certain degree? But the issue is, and I think I can do this. I'm gonna try to do something really cool. Cool. Can I do it? I can't. We want, we don't want that area. 
Whoops. We want this area. Did everyone see how I just flipped the graphic? And we want, I, I know the numbers look all weird now, but we want above negative 1.5, so it's the same. So since we figured out just a moment ago, that this is between 2.5 through 16%. This area over here has to be between 84 through 97.5%. This is a really, this is one of the hardest questions on this. <clears throat> one of the hardest questions here. So it has to be the other side of the curve, somewhere between those areas. And so when you look at the possible answers, the only answer between uh, 84 and 97.5, you see how this one's outside of it, that's more than 97.5, so that's wrong. And then the only logical one has to be this one. This is the area of the the, the dark shaded in area, like that, uh, well, I'm not seeing it. This is 6.68, but we want the complement of that. And the picture really shows it, that we don't want 6.68, and that term complement just means one minus. So just for making it easy, let's call this 7% then the complement of 7%, this will help you for later in the semester, is 93%. That's what we call the complement, is like one minus it. So it's everything but that. One being everything minus it. So one minus is the complement. I called it 7% just to make it easier on the decimals. That area to the left of that is 7%. The area to the right of it is 93%. They're complements of each other. They add up to one. So it's either A or not A. That's complements. So we're kind of learning some other topics, but it helps with this right here. Could we possibly see, this would be the absolute toughest type of question on the test. Do not do not spend an hour trying to do those types of problems. There's a lot of different things on this test. If you're like, I have no idea what's going on, don't don't this. There's the test generally ranges from like a level one or two difficulty to there's a few level nines or tens. Like, but those just separate out usually from like a 92 student to a 98 or 100 student. There's a few tricky questions on the test. You're you're welcome. Don't just don't spend. I get really bummed because a lot of times people will find the hardest question on the practice test and we'll spend like two hours explaining it. And that's not bad, but one semester I was explaining this question that was really, really tough. And I knew what was on the test and I'd keep like, I, cause I know the test a lot of times. And I was, ex I was saying to the students, I was like, well, we can do something else. They're like, no, let's keep doing this. And then I would do it for like another 10 minutes. I was like, well, let's move on to another question because I knew the way we did that question was not on the current test. And I kept trying to inch them away from it without saying it's not on the test. <laughs> <laughs> that question is not on the test this year. <laughs> and so I kept being like, well, let's, let's do a different type of question now. They're like, no, no, I still need it. I was like, well, I think you're getting it, um, but don't worry. Uh, like, I can't say it's not on the test. So, um, but I, I want to utilize it. So yeah, <laughs> getting back on track. <laughs> now we know. And I can't say every time I'm like, let's, yeah, I try to, I try to do my best to help you guys stay on track and get good grades. So and I, I can't be like, that's not on the test. Let's know. <laughs> We can move on. I mean, I, I'm not saying that's not on the test. I'm not saying that's not on the test. I'm saying it's not like a ton of points on the test, if it is. Okay, who we got? Epic Pony doing a great job. Rational Shark. Rational Shark. Show them Show them what's happening right here. <laughs> Write the regression model. Okay. Okay, so what do you notice right here? We got some regression output. This is obviously helping us read the regression output. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm going to disappear. I'm away. I'm gone. So you need to find the intercept. You need to find the intercept. And so it should be B0 plus B1X. So I see the intercept right here. That's B0. Oh, good. I wasn't blocking the right answer. And then we have B1 right here. And what do you guys get? I think I see the right answer. I was right. Wow. You guys are doing great. That's amazing. We only have 14 people playing, but still. But still. That's great. Please know that the regression equation, um, let's let's show the media again. This is B0, which is the intercept. So it's y hat equals B0 plus B1x. This is uh, B1, and then the x variable is right here. Okay, Hannah, great question. So when you look at this right here, when you look at weekend tax, weekend tax is the x variable, which is located right here. That's the name of the x variable. This is the coefficient that goes with weekend tax. Do you see, do you see how they're connected? And then the intercept doesn't get anything with it. It's B0. So you notice right here, the intercept is by itself. It doesn't have a variable name. It's just called the intercept. So the intercept just goes here by itself. And now we are predicting, uh, oh, it says weekend tax and weekend tax. Oh, darn it. I remember seeing this last semester. Should be weekday tax. Sorry about that. Typo. Um, so when you look at this right here, don't worry about the Y variable name. It should be weekday tax. Um, but does that make sense? 
Um, so you could. This is possible. You should know what this jump output looks like. The things to know in the jump output are this is your intercept. Great job, Hannah. This is your X variable's name. This is the coefficient of the X variable. This is B1 right here. This is B0. And then which of these, the top or the bottom one, is the significance of the model? We did this a lot today. The top or the bottom one is the significance of the model. Which one of those is the significance of the model? They're both significant. Which one of those would be the significance of the model? This is the intercept. If this is the intercept, then this is the something else. It'll be the bottom one. Because the bottom one is the significance of the slope. But, so you might hear me say this a lot. Don't worry. I, I, I ask these questions because I know a lot of people might not know it. But remember, I always say things like no one cares about the intercept. I'm, I'm not saying you don't need it. But the intercept is not something we put a lot of our attention on other than using it to calculate. So the significance of a model is the significance of its slope. Tell, oh, holy mackerel. As soon as I hit the mic. So tell me right here, with this variable, <laughs> I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> Be right back after this. Cut the audio and watch everything quick. So if you have a flat line, I want to see these answers when I come back. What would be significant? A flat line or a uh, line that has a kind of bend to it? Which of those would be significant? A flat line? What are you doing, Mike? There we go. Sorry, Mike. Didn't mean it. I'll be right back here. Flat line would be significant or a curved line would be or a, like a line with a slope. I'm back. <laughs> I like it right there. You got some music and stuff. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I figure I'm always talking to the microphone. It might not be the cleanest thing because I'm always like talking into it. So I just whacked it with my hand. It's like, what are we doing? It would be a sloped line. A sloped line would be a significant line. So when the line is sloped, it's definitely more significant. And that's where we look at this value right here is the slope of the line significance. So this is the P value for the slope of the line. The P value for the intercept just tells us that if the intercept is equal to zero or not. So we don't really care about the... <laughs> you guys are awesome in this shot. Like. Is that because then X affects Y? Kind of. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. You're, yeah, Justin, that's it. Justin, 50 points. A secret 50 points to Justin right there. I like when you guys are thinking about it. It's like, that means that X and Y have some sort of relationship because someone else can answer. You can you can get 50. You can get a secret 50 or two. But when would, when would we have the highest P value for the slope? When the slope is what? When would we have the highest P value for the slope? When the slope is what? When would the p-value be the highest it could be for the slope? When the slope is what? Hannah got the 50 points right there. Hannah, you're right. If the slope was zero, then the p-value would be one, meaning it's not significant. The more sloped it is, the lower the p-value. Does that make sense to everybody right there? So Hannah, you're exactly right, because if the slope had a value of zero, then you'd have a flat line, which is the least significant. Yeah, these are the kind of things that we should think about. And it's like, when you start being like, oh, wait a minute, this is a statistically significant line, which will have a lower p-value. If the slope was zero, then the p-value would be very high and not significant. Now, don't look at the value of the slope and be like, hmm, that value of the slope is pretty high. It, it'll do it for you. It'll calculate the p-value. But if the slope was a smaller slope or closer to zero, the slope would be less significant because the line would be flatter. This is a significant slope. You're like, well, it's only 1.3. Well, math. 
So, um, but the smaller it is, the less significant it is. You won't have to calculate those things. It's just good conceptually to understand this is less significant. This is more significant. This has a slope zero. This is going away from zero. Also, this can be significant too. Good job. Great concept stuff right there. I love, if you know this stuff, especially for a lot of classes, you'd be like, it can help to understand statistical significance used throughout many disciplines. So it's all data, data everywhere, jumble points everywhere. Next question. Which of the following is not a word or phrase used to describe correlation? Correlation is four things, but one of these is not. Which one of these things is not correlation? Correlation is four ways to describe it. Strength. Oh, no, I gave away one. Which of these is not? Direction. I gave away another. Strength, direction, form, and something else. Well, the answers it's not are something, center, spread. That's univariate data. So the answer it should not be on here is shape. Shape is not a way that we describe correlation. Correlation is strength, which is the tightness of how something is around its form, which is either linear or not linear. And then we have strength, direction. Direction is either positive, negative, or kind of neither. And then unusual features is things like outliers. So strength, how tight it is around the form. Direction, is it up, down, or kind of neither? Form, is it linear or not linear? Unusual features are things that break the bivariate trend. Shape center spread is for univariate data, where strength, direction, form, unusual features, the four things is for bivariate data. Does everyone have good notes on that right here? Everyone know what's going on with these notes? Don't see my light. Ah! I should not play around. I'll break things. So I really like my stream lights really good. Really happy with it. Okay, going on to the next question right here. Ooh, Rational Shark, I knew I was good to bet on you. We'll have to look at the tape and see if I was betting on you, but I am very happy with those bets on Rational Shark. Betting all the money, Rational Shark. You need to somehow... Okay, here we go. <laughs> Interpret R squared in context of the problem. I probably need to get out of the way of this. This is going to be a big answer. Ah! R squared is percent of the variation in Y explained by the variation in X, so we need to identify Y. We've abbreviated Y as WH... WHR. So Y is weekly hours reading. So we need to understand that it's percent of variation in Y explained by the variation in X. And I did have to abbreviate some words here because Kahoot has a word limit. But it's percent of the variation in Y explained by the variation in X. If you notice here, a few of them have R squared and some of them don't. So it's 94% of the variation in weekly hours reading is explained by someone's age. And I would have been blocking that answer right here. So it's blank percent secret 50 points who can put the secret 50 points in the chat you need to put the interpretation blank percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x who's got that for a secret 50 points right now remember there are winners to this and you do get points for just watching this live so blank percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x and when you substitute that in what do we see right here i'm going to call it the name of the winner we see blank percent of the variation nice job justin right there another secret 50 points so we have blank percent of the variation in weekly reading hours is explained by the variation in age and it'd be 94 percent of the variation in weekly reading hours is explained by the variation in age nice job good review and remember it's uh blank percent of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x here's a tip little tip is that we can say you know it accounts for the variation too it's another way of saying it that could appear um because i looked over stuff and so now, how you doing, Shark? Shark, no! Red Bunny, I like Red Bunny. That's cool, Red Bunny? Okay, Red Bunny, you're you're my new favorite. Um, so it's blank percent of the variation. Uh, sorry, I'll have to say it without the screen on there. Um, it's I think it was like 94% of the variation in someone's weekly hours of reading can be explained by their age. Um, and it can also be, you can rephrase it that 94% of the variation in someone's weekly hours of reading is accounted for by their age or the variation in their age. So don't let that trick you. Explained by accounted for means the same thing. Like it is accounted for this by this variation. Like accounted for just means, yeah, good question there, Neil, and appreciate it. So Red Bunny, I'm betting all the money on Red Bunny right now. Red Bunny, you got this. Because bunnies are cool. Explain the slope in context of the problem. Blank for, or for each one unit increase in X, we expect Y to increase by B1. So let's try to make sure we get that. For each one unit increase in X, we have to identify what X is. So X right here is going to be uh, age. So for each additional age somebody has, we expect their weekly hours of reading to increase by 10. Cool. So for each additional year, I would expect someone's weekly hours of reading to increase by 10. I think that's got it. Each additional year right here. Oof. How many reds do we have? I might have tricked people. 
Oh no. Is that this one right here it says for each additional weekly hours of reading, I expect age to increase by 10 years. So it's for each additional year that someone is older, I guess. I expect weekly hours of reading. So it's for each additional X. <clears throat> for each additional X, we expect Y to increase. So for each additional X, X right here, I'll click it again. X is age. So for each additional year of someone's age, I expect their weekly hours of reading to increase by B1. 50 points. First person to put that notation in the chat. Make sure you have it. For each additional uh, increase in X, we expect Y to increase by B1 or decrease, technically. Sam's got it right there. Sam probably knew. I'm going to give Sam the points right there. 50 points, Sam. Nice job. For each additional X, we expect. And then X will be age. I'm going to give you the points right there. Make sure um, if you do it in context, it'll be age. But then you could do it without context and say for each additional X, we expect Y to increase or decrease by B1. So for each additional X, we expect... And then, but make sure if you do it that way. So I want to point something out right here. Don't either, if you're giving it, oh no, everyone's doing it. Um, if you, if you say X, if you say X, then you would be doing just kind of the general interpretation. Like for each additional X, we expect Y to increase by B1. You got it. You totally got it, Sam. And then if, if you're going to say for each additional year, someone is older, like for each additional age, someone has like year, someone is older we expect their weekly hours of reading to increase by 10. Does that make sense? So, um, and so Sam's the only one. When I give these special points, it's it's like first come, first serve. Sam got them right there. But does everyone understand that like, we would say for each additional, uh, yes, Claire right there. Claire, I'm giving Claire 50 points. She's correct it right there. For each initial year, we expect weekly hours of reading to increase by 10. That's right. So you should put the context. Terry was in the chat earlier saying context. So if you're going to use context, which we often ask for, and we have you write it out in the test a lot of times, I'm a little less worried because you don't have to write it out for this test. But when I teach this in person, I'm having so many people say it. I have like everybody say it. And I'm like, context, what is the context? And I'm like freaking out. I'm like, guys, what is the context? And so I just, you know, I play it up. Um, so for each additional uh, year, we expect weekly hours of reading to increase by 10. And it would probably be 10 hours. Don't worry. I'd be on the test. I'd be like, yeah, they get it. Because it's weekly hours of reading. So good stuff right there. We got it. Context. What does data need? Do you know what data needs? Data needs context at all times. Data needs context. Red bunny. People are people are going after the red bunny. Don't do it. Red bunny has been destined to win this. It's their destiny. Explain the intercept in context. Ah. So what do we have right here? When X is equal to zero, and you can probably guess my secret 50 on this. When X is equal to zero, we expect Y to equal B zero. So what is X? X is age. When someone's age is equal to zero, what is Y? We expect weekly hours of reading to equal something. Be careful. We expect it to equal B zero. That right there is B zero. This is B one. B zero is when X is equal to zero. So you should see when age is equal to zero, we expect weekly hours reading to equal. Great job, you guys. I didn't trick you guys on this one. There's the answer, just so you can see it again. So make sure you read that. Make sure you know how it works. I did not trick enough people. That's a good thing. So it's when X is equal to zero, we expect Y to equal B zero. And for the secret 50 points, who's going to get the secret 50 right now? We need to see when X is equal to zero, we expect Y to equal B zero. I'll slow it down. When X is equal to zero, we expect Y to equal B zero. Who's got the secret 50 on this? Paying attention, following along, writing these notes. When X is equal to zero, we expect Y to equal B zero. Justin right there, you got it. Secret 50 to Justin. And you can get these are all, they they add on to each other. So if you've gotten multiple secret 50s, which some people have gotten, you're getting them and they're yours. So make sure to email me those secret 50 and great job practicing. If you're writing in the chat number, you're getting those Streamlab points and you're practicing. That's what we like to see. Whoa, we're almost done here. You ready? Let's do the next question. Red Bunny, no! Fabulous Seal is back. I'm cool with that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy now. Fabulous Seal is back. You got this, Fabulous Seal. You got this. Here we go. Which one is not a condition for regression? Oh, this is... I'm not even saying anything. Not, not saying... Not saying anything. This is such... We got this. I'm not... Because you know I want to say it. You know I want to say it. There's a secret 50 somewhere out there that someone knows they can grab. I want to see the full thing, though. I want to see... You got it. Claire got the secret 50 right there. You got it. Claire knows this. Uh, <laughs> no, don't... Because someone might miss it. No! It's all right. You don't miss it. It's all right. 
QQ straight enough. No outliers. You guys got it. So Claire got the secret 50 right there. There's another secret 50. What is the, these are the conditions for correlation too. There's three conditions for correlation. Who knows the secret fourth for a 50 that, um, that we have for, uh, regression. Needy got it right there. Needy, that was, you were like, you got it. Or Needy and Neelan. So, um, I'm going to give both because there we go right there. So I think, yeah, you hit the up right then. <laughs> nice job. So let's review that. QQ means both things are quantitative. Here, we'll go to screen real quick and we'll show it. Okay. Okay. So what's QQ mean? QQ stands for quantitative variables. It, you know, it's in fully said as quantitative variables. So that literally means to make a scatter plot, you, you literally have to have two quantitative variables. You have to have something like height and weight. If you don't have this, you're doing something like a mosaic plot because that's categorical categorical, or you're doing something like box plots, which is uh, categorical quantitative. So we see other things right here, um, which are not QQ. Those are not QQ. So you, you can't literally display them in a, in a, a scatter plot. So when you have quantitative quantitative, you have a scatter plot. Just so everyone knows, make it very clear. This is a scatter plot I'm about to draw. Scatter plot is bivariate quantitative. This is a mosaic plot, bivariate categorical. These are side side, side by side box plots. They are um, categorical quantitative. And I should mention, you can also do with these uh, stacked histograms. Stacked histograms should have uniform scales and uniform axes. So that's a huge note. Please take a note. Stacked histograms should have uniform scales and uniform axes. You should have the same scale horizontally and the same scale uh, axis on vertical and horizontals. So you want uniform axis and uniform scales. They should be put to the same scale. Both of these right here are uh, the Y is quantitative and the X is categorical. Sorry, space pen. You're not the easiest to read sometimes. I'm sorry, space pen. And this is quantitative quantitative and this is categorical categorical. And the first one there is the Y and the second one there is the X just to make that clear. And then also we should draw into here a contingency table. Contingency table just shows us the numbers inside of it. Just like, sure. So that's a contingency table. I'll just go up there real quick. Contingency table. So scatter plots right here are the QQ one. And we want to see inside of a scatter plot, we want to see here a straight enough relationship. Does that relationship right there look straight enough? Does that look straight enough? Yes, definitely. Good job there, Sam. Excellent work. That looks straight enough. We put our line through this and it's pretty much a straight line through it. And there's a little bit of a bend. Let me try to hit the bend there. There we go. That looks better. Um, I want to make this less tricky. There we go. That's straight enough. Don't worry. There's ways to test this to know exactly how it's straight enough. Like once again, I showed it kind of earlier today, but don't worry. Um, and I wouldn't know... I tried to make this one kind of nice. No regression is perfect. And there's ways to know if it's really good or bad. Like there's actual statistical tests we can do. But this right here is a very, very good regression, I'd say. It's quantitative, quantitative. So it's we can do a regression. It's straight enough. There's not really any outliers. Outliers would look like this. We try to make it obvious in 201 if they're outliers. There's ways to numerically define these things as outliers. So we have very, very, very specific ways of understanding the outliers if we actually want to do numeric analysis on them. Um, then if there's plot thickening in 201, we're definitely going to make it look something like this. So we want you to know these concepts in 201. And then the line, well, that has a linearity problem and a plot thickening problem now because the cone shape to go through it is going to have this. So that has both linearity and uh, plot thickening now. So that one has issues with the kind of, uh, not outliers, but linearity now is an issue for this one, it looks like. And also plot thickening is an issue. What is plot thickening? It's a change in strength. And it could get thicker or thinner in either direction for plot thickening. Cool. So this right here is issues with plot thickening. But you could also do an example right here where it gets thicker down here. And this would still be an example of plot thickening. And now it's also got a bend right there. Are you haunted, Space Pen? I am sorry. I did not mean it. So I did not. So that is how plot thickening works. This is a very bad model now. It's got some sort of um, kind of uh, polynomial nature to it. So a line would not be good for it. And there is a heteroscedastic nature to it showing that we do not see. Now, I want to say something. If you heard me say what I just said right here, 
that's not going to be a good business analytics way of saying it. Yes, a statistician is going to know what I'm saying. But if you're if you're in business analytics, here's what you'd say to someone. Yeah, it looks like a straight line won't work on that. Also, it looks like the model is like really good in the middle. And on the outside, it's really bad. Like the, the points are really far out. So I literally just said we need a polynomial model to fit the trend and to fit the trend. And there's a heteroscedastic relationship throughout the model. But you usually just say like, if you're going to talk to someone, be like, yeah, line doesn't really work. We'll probably need to like put something that bends through the model. And then also, um, it looks like the model changes the strength because like it's in the middle, it's really good around the model. And on the outsides, it's really bad. So that's how we try to talk in business analytics, because if you can't make sense of it, you're like, there's a heteroscedastic relationship. I guess the technical term for it. Um, but you try to make it sound like common English, which is our goal with these graphics. Cool. Let's do it. Because if you, you say things people don't know, then, well, what are you doing? <laughs> No one understands you. They're like, cool, heteroscedastic, whatever that means. It means the plot thickens. <laughs> oh, here we go. QQ strain of knowledge, plot doesn't thicken. Is the following residual plot good? Ah! Is that a good residual plot? Review question from today. What should a residual plot show? What should a residual plot show? You should know this. A good residual plot should show this. Someone's going to say in the chat and get a secret 50 points right here. What should a good you got it, Neilan? Neilan got a secret 50 points right there. Nothing. Nothing of interest. Does it show nothing? It does. So this one, a good residual plot. Um, big review from today's lecture. I like that the, a lot of these are review questions from today's lecture. Good job, past Brian. Future Brian's happy with you. Um, good residual plot shows no pattern. It's just that a residual plot, we take our line and we make it flat. So this one doesn't have a line through it, but if it did, it would go through zero. Um, just sometimes people don't graph that in, and I chose one that didn't. Um, but yep, good residual plot. So it's it's pretty easy with like code and stuff to make a residual plot. I think we still have this up from today. So I've got a linear model, and I type plot, and I go here to model, and it should do all the plots for me of the model. And you can see right here the plots of the model. We want to see the residual plot, residual by leverage, scale, QQ plot. Residual versus the fitted model. And you can see very quickly, it's trying to show me that there looks to be an issue with my model. Does anyone see what the issue with my model is? Does anyone see how many questions on the exam are from today's lecture? 20%? Not a ton. But do you see how this residual plot right here has a line at zero? Hopefully all of them. <laughs> what is this red line trying to show me in this plot that they added in? Also, we've got numbers on these trying to show me some outliers. What do you think? Why does this thing put a red line in here showing me this? It's trying to show me that this is not straight enough. Does that make It's trying to show me that there's a bend in the model. So um, it's trying to show me a bend in the model because the this is the linear model going through it. And then the this is like there's a bend throughout the model. It's not straight enough. So you can see it, it kind of helps you out with some, a lot of software will show you these things to show you that there's a bend in your model. And it looks like there's an issue because you can see that it goes below the model. This is kind of an overfit model going through. So it's it's kind of tracing to the mean of the points. So it's figuring out like for each certain group, like where would the mean of it be? And it's not a good linear model. And all that, all of this was just done by typing plot. I just plotted my linear model. That's why I love code. It's like, okay, just plot it. Tell me what it looks like. Back to the Kahoot though. No more coding, Brian. No more coding. Kahoot time. Here we go. Ooh, Rocky Camel. Rocky Camel, you can do this. You can do this. What percent of track runners are expected to run at a time of 290 or higher? So we got a normal curve question here. 290 is going to be right down here. So here's where 290 is at. So you have to look and trace above it. Now it looks like it's a pretty big amount. So 290 or higher. So what will it be? I think you guys got this. This is getting easy stuff here at the end. We're almost done. <clears throat> I need it. I'm going to be responding to emails. I got you guys. We got this. What do you think? So in between 290 and 370. Good job. I think you guys know these ones. What percent of data is between 290 and 370? What percent of data is between 290 and 370? 95. No, I'm so sorry. 95 and then 2.5 would be below here and 97.5 would be above here. Yeah, you guys got it. These are good review questions right here. Good stuff. 
seeing if anyone's like, slow down. Last two questions. Last two questions. Let's do this. 68, 95. I have absolute faith in you. Give me energy. Send me your energy. The lemurs have faith in you. I don't think they'll both sit on my shoulders at the same time. They're... Nope. Nope. Ah. Hold on, lemurs. Hold on to each other. Hold each other's hands. And... Okay. okay, they're up. Let's sit up. Fall backwards. The lemurs have faith in you. 68, 95. No! No! This, this one still has faith. It's losing faith, though. No, it really has faith. Wow. Oh, it... <laughs> 68, 95, 99.7. It lost faith. So 68, 95, 99.7. I don't know how many times I can say it. 68, 95, 99.7. These are the numbers on the empirical rule. They represent the data contained within one, two, and three standard deviations. We're just having some fun at the end here. 68, 95, 99.7. All that good stuff right here. So we got it. They're supporting Stat Nation. They're the mascots of Stat Nation. Maybe we'll have some more mascots later semester. So we got our last question here. Is it a fun one? Or is it a serious one? I can't remember. So last question is, Best superhero. Get ready to answer quick. Get ready to answer quick. Is it Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, or Iron Man? What is it? Hopefully I didn't put a wrong answer. <laughs> I'll say this, though. Has anyone not seen Into the Spider-Verse? Or has anyone seen it? That's a, you say yes now and you'll be right either way. Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man hands down. Who's winning out these days? We got some Batman. Everyone knows like Batman, but Spider-Verse... Man, the movie makes me cry. Who is it? Has anyone not seen it? Go watch it this weekend. We're gonna, I think we have an assignment due Sunday night. We have an assignment maybe Friday and Sunday. So you guys got Saturday. It was like, I thought it'd be good. Like, I thought it'd be like a 7 out of 10. And it was it was like a 9.8 out of 10. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's so good. It is so good. It is so, like graphically amazing like just the graphics like the visual presentation of it i could i wonder if i could say original iron man the very first iron man is better than spider verse um like what what robert downey jr did for iron man no spoilers <laughs> um what he did the first iron man was an out of nowhere movie like i mean it's robert downey jr he's got some credits to his name and it's Iron Man, it's a superhero. But that movie, like at the very start of it where he gets captured and everything, and then Obadiah Stane, who Jeff Bridges played so magically, like just in like, <laughs> he's like, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. And the guy's like, sir, I'm not Tony Stark, but I'm not Tony Stark. And then that guy, I think, came back for uh, Spider-Man um, Far From Home. If I remember, he's one of the people. Oh, thank you. That was one of my dreams growing up. That, I don't know if that was... It's like, it's like, Tony Stark! <laughs> so as a superhero with the cells, reading all comics, whatnot, Spider-Man wins. He's got the best moral compass along with Captain America. Yeah, Captain America is really... You know, that brings up one of the best scenes in... Um, it was Endgame, I think. Endgame was really good when uh, he was in the elevator again. I don't want to ruin anything, but the Endgame, when he's in the elevator, someone will be like, yeah. I Probably my favorite Marvel movie has to be uh, Infinity War. Infinity War was top tier just because it's it's um, Thanos, right? Yeah, it's Thanos movie. I was thinking of, but you know who I really want to see in a movie. Okay, we're doing a secret 50 points. I'm going to show you one of my, my, one of my former roommate drew this. So you're going to see... Oh, get ready. Oh. Okay. Secret 50 points. Identify. I literally, I'll be taking this off the wall. So I was like, why not? I'll be moving. So I need to take this off the wall. But my former roommate drew this. So you got to tell me who this is. You ready? Secret 50 points. Who is this? Not the most complex drawing, but I love it. So 
like such a cool drawing and he autographed it down below. But I love the sketch of it. I think it's such a cool sketch. <laughs> Let's go ahead and there we go. Did we fix it? We fixed it. Oh, does anyone know? No one knows, I don't think. It's not Martian Manhunter. Ghost, uh, no one knows. No one knows, not a single person knows. If you're into superheroes, I'll give you some really cool stuff to look at. We're done with, we're done with review. We're just chilling now. No. Oh man, I got some stuff for you guys to check out. No one knows who this is. And I really wish he, uh, he fights Superman. He's got his eyes like, oh man. No one knows who this is. Oh, it's so cool. This is, uh, it's dark side. So that's, uh, he's like dark side. He's, he's, oh my gosh. Um, but that's dark side. My former roommate merch drew that for me. Um, then autographed it at the bottom. It's got like Brian merch 2011 is when he drew it. So Brian merch down there. And, um, but yeah, did Morgan, did you know dark side? I think it's like dark S E I D. Yeah. He's really, he's, he wanted to like do drawing and stuff. He did cool stuff. Have a great night, Claire, but look up, um, I can't play it on stream. I don't think they'll let me, um, look up like Superman fights dark side. And there's some really, and even Batman or look up Batman kicks dark side. Like, I think like, I think like, cause like dark side, he's got those eyes and he can just like literally just destroy you. It's like his Omega beams or something like that. Dark side fights Superman and like they go punch for punch. So look up like dark side fights Superman and you'll be like some pretty good stuff. A lot of good animation. Um, who's it? Uh, Tremor of the people who made the animated universe. It's, merch would be so mad at me. Um, the, the, not the Nolan verse. Yeah. Check it out. Dark side's a really cool villain. Um, what is the final leaderboard? Oh my gosh. Why didn't we do that? What are we doing? Here's the podium. Turn up the music on this. Oh, I hope I really didn't hurt you guys earphones. Lovely Macau. I'm so sorry. Nice job. So we got right here. We said 50 points goes out to Fabulous Seal. We got Lovely Macau getting 100 points and Lucky Impala getting 200 points right there. Amazing work. So make sure to send me a screenshot of your win right here on your phone or whatever you got. Send me that screenshot. So great job. And they've really jazzed up the music and they look sound pretty cool. I like this music better though. I should have done this. But yep, yeah, check it out. Check out some nerdy stuff. Check out some dark side. Check out Superman fighting him. I wish. Man, this is Brian rants about superhero movies. Like those Justice League movies or whatever. What are they doing? Henry Cavill was a good Superman, but the direction. He was good. Uh, put it in adjust. I, yeah, the, the VH. Yeah, they're, the animated movies are good. Animated stuff. The DC animated universe is great. Um, the uh, Can someone post the link for Sam in the chat to where the exam one stuff is, where it'll have all the stuff. Go to stats for one. I can, I can do it. I can do it. I got this. Okay. Let me go to stats one. I'll post it. And exam one, review material for exam one. Cool. Okay. You guys probably already did it because you guys are awesome. Um, I haven't seen if anyone's attempted the test yet. I haven't seen yet. I'll have to look at that later. I would suggest waiting till tomorrow. Mini term is so quick. I do realize that. And um, that's why, once again, make sure you're um always doing as many of the quizzes as you can i do know it's tough and i do know you're getting hit with a lot of info i mean basically the best thing for mini term is to spend like five or six hours a day like like this is your like whole day of school and so you just it's a lot but for three weeks like we figured it out we said okay wait a minute how many days are in a year i mean how many weeks are in a year 52 weeks in a year you divide that by three so you could get 17 courses done and you're basically getting a credit hour a week. So you could get done with school in a little over two years. So 
it's very, very quick. Um, th what we said was, I believe it is, you only need a thousand. I put it way too low. Um, so yeah, mini term is the way to go to get classes done. And I wish we'd start offering like, I don't think I can teach two many term. I don't think they'd let me. If you guys notice, I don't, we don't just have class in the morning and then I'm done. Uh, close. Uh, Sam, let me change the, it's 1000. Cause I, I would like it to be that, but I can't cause I didn't say it. Um, Did I say this would be three? I'm pro I'll have to review it. That's under review. I <laughs> I think that's what I said. There's like a sliding scale of it's worth less. But um, by being here, by interacting, you're getting the points. And I know, sorry for multiple people have said, but I can't watch live. I can't watch live. Um, it's my biggest goal to get people to watch live. And I, I do understand that some people have jobs, kids, uh, obligations. Um, so it's just tough because I'm like, I know the number one key for success in this class is being here, taking notes, doing the work. Like there's a lot of other things like being good at math is good. I mean, you can be good at math and not be good at stats. So, and that's points added to our final grade. Yep. Yep. But remember that if you are, if you are not like we taught, don't, <laughs> I, don't I hate being mean, Brian. Um, like if you're like 2.1 points away, and you don't make it to the next mark, you don't get the bonus. So I'm gonna like those. I'll, I'll look at your Streamlab points, and then you get up to that. But it could be super close. There's a lot of people who are super close, and then it's kind of like because if I'm gonna round someone up, then maybe I'll round someone else up. So I always just do it literally. This is what you have on the dot. Does that make sense, Morgan? Like, I think it's really generous. I think it's like a really good like you have a great opportunity by interacting to get points, like get a good bit of points. And then someone could literally be a thousandth of a point of, oh, it hurts me to, oh, someone's hopefully, I don't know. I got some emails and people were like, Brian, I'm so close. I am so close. But I think you guys can know we just finished our sixth day of class and people are already at, you'll see the points here in a second. And hopefully I don't make a mistake and don't turn on points one day, but I've, they should all be on. The points should be working. Come on, Streamlabs, where are you at? Um, there's the stream of points. So you already have half the points you needed and we haven't even done half our classes yet. So, and I'll keep giving opportunities. And so keep showing up, keep interacting and you're already halfway to the maximum I'm willing to give. And then I'm kind of using this as a test to see where we need to be at. And just like, even with the 1000 right now, you've already got a huge help to your grade. So keep showing up, keep interacting. My fear, this is my last little bit and you can ask more questions if you want. My fear is, see the last time I played it was 2019 up there. Uh, my fear is that people will be like, oh, I did great on the first exam. I'm, I'm good. I understand stats. This is easy. The material goes a little bit slower. I would say the second test and the third test contain as much material, co material combined as the first test. Um, so we go slower, but the material does get more difficult. Like it's stuff you haven't heard before. It's stuff you haven't seen. It's not like the class gets really hard. It's just that the material is new to a lot of students when we get to the end of it. But I've already laid a lot of groundwork by talking about things like p-values, by even today mentioning the null hypothesis for the chi-squared test of independence. I didn't say this is the null hypothesis for the chi-squared test of independence, but I try to mention things in the future that you'll see. I try to be like, oh, well, we'll use p-values again later on. And then when you see it another time, you're like, oh, we did this earlier on. So my goal is you see things multiple times. And by the time we see it, when we're really studying it to know it in depth, you're like, oh yeah, that's a mosaic plot. And oh, we're gonna do a test on it now to see if the two things are independent or not independent, which if you think about what I'm showing you, I'm showing the mosaic plot that's flat across or one that's not flat. It's kind of like the line being flat or a line like this, which is either the line has no slope or the line has a slope. Either they're independent or they're not independent. And if you're kind of getting that, you're way ahead of the class. If that made some sense to you, you're you're in test three material and understanding it, pretty cool. Start another code. <laughs> we can't, you'll win. You'll take our code. We had this block up. We did so good. You can see the code. Oh, oh, we'll block out that again. You know what? We got some random people in here. You know what that means. Random people in our Kahoot. Cool man is here. Cool man wins all the games. So good to have you, cool man. We got some random people right here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Some ran There's always randomness on the internet. Cool man. Good to see you. Well, when we get chill people in the chat, I'm ready to answer questions. Oh, wait, cool, man. Okay. 
If you want, cool man, you ready? I'm gonna ask a question. This is your Kahoot. Okay, we, we gotta give you some Kahoot music, okay? Give me a second here, cool man, we got you. I got you some, I got you, I'm gonna take away the blocks so you can't see our codes. That's a big block. Okay, you ready, cool man? <laughs> here we go, cool man. Okay, what is the proper measure of center? So we need some music right here, you ready? We got some music going. So we got a distribution that looks like this, and we've got A and B. What is the proper measure of center? The mean or the median? We'll get some wrong answers too. The negative. <laughs> well, measure of center is like a conceptual thing. So when we go right here, and it might be negative eight, like it could be, it could be that this is at negative eight. We never gave an access to this. You never know. So right here, we'll play some more music. We got some other stuff right here. We'll play some Mario. You got this. What is it? So, uh, ah. uh, so which one is it? Which one is it, cool man? You got this. A, B, C, or D. You got them cheering you on. You got this. We're all rooting for you, cool man. Is it A, B, C, or D? What is the proper measure? A, B, C, or D? Oof. <laughs> Oh, you got it. So remember I put some wrong answers in there. I just, I sprinkled in some wrong answers on that. Answers C and D are wrong. The delay, I might say that. Okay, here we go. Uh oh, the timer's counting down, cool man. The timer's counting down. Oh, well, you can revise your answer, cool man. You can revise your answer right here. You can, you can change your answer if you want. They're giving you some help, cool man. You got this. <laughs> Great job, Sam. <laughs> the answer is Sam helped out there. You guys, you guys are so crazy in the chat. You guys got it. It is B. The answer is B. So there we go. Okay, now we got to go to the graphic right here. So we all changed our answers. So now we go to the graphic screen right here. And whoops. No, we changed the answers. So there we go. There's the answers right there. What kind of graphic is this, everyone? What kind of graphic is this right here? That's all right. We don't mind you. We're having some fun. So that, what kind of graphics is that? Everyone should know that's a bar chart. That's a bar chart. And then we have here, cool man. Cool man got a thousand points. Instantaneous answer. Sam was right behind. And then we have other ties right here. So we got there. Everyone else. There we go. There's the Kahoot leaderboard right there. Good stuff. <laughs> Cracking me up. Cool man. So um, that's got it. Pie charts and bar charts. You got it. I'm so, okay, 99.9. <laughs> it like, it does like a multiplier on them. <laughs> oh, no, not 99 literal points. <laughs> Sam, you get another 50 for helping out Cool Man right there. That's another secret 50 bonus points. Sam, you got another secret 50 bonus points for helping out Cool Man. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> well, I think that does it. Well, we're going to do something. Don't leave yet, Cool Man, because... I'm going to, if you guys want, I'm going to go to my office real quick. So you guys chill out for just a moment. We teach uh, stats one. Uh, this is all college level stuff here. We're doing intro to stats. Cool, man. But if you hang out for a moment, I'm going to go to my office. So just chill out here and I'll be right back. Everyone just chill out. Be right back. Hey Brian, what's up? Hey Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam! No!